aire. Ready to go? Yeah. Okay, we are starting. Welcome to our last live stream of the year. We're going to crank this back up in January. In fact, we're planning on doing two live streams per month because I'm having so much fun talking to my peeps and getting uh, information from you as well as hopefully giving you some information. We're enjoying it so much. So you can look forward to that. And welcome to those of you who are watching the replay as well. Many of you uh, do that as well. I'm Dr. David E. Clark, affectionately known as Dr. Narc. Narcissism is what we do. In fact, what we do is explain narcissism and get the victims of narcissists the heck out of those marriages, out of those relationships. We don't teach you how to manage them. Waste of time. We teach you how to get out and build a new life and heal and get strong enough to get out and protect your relationship with your kids. Well, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. We did, the Clark family. And I hope that you that your narc didn't ruin your Thanksgiving. Narcs, as you know, love to ruin all holidays. When the spotlight isn't on them completely, they just have a fit. And so they have to bring the spotlight to them by creating drama, which is what they're good at. But that's a topic for another live stream. Today's topic is the top 10 reasons you stay with the narc. I had this sweet lady who we had sent out the email blast. Phil Dugas of Dugas Creative sent out the email blast with the topic. And a lady emailed right away and said, well, are you being sarcastic? I said, Absolutely. Because there are no good reasons to stay with an arc. So I'll be going over these 10 in our, in our time and, of course, exploding them. In many of my phone advice sessions, I talk to spouses, mostly women, who live with narcs who are destroying their lives and destroying their children and turning their children against them. But because of codependency, many will give me reasons why they have to stay with the narc. They believe these things themselves. The narc has convinced them. How they grew up has convinced them. Their family of origin issues, a pastor, a Christian counselor who's a panty waste, have convinced them, well, you, have, you pretty much have to stay. No, you don't. God says you don't. Part of my job is to convince them that their reasons are, in fact, bogus. Now, I do it in a nice way. Of course, I'm a nice person, although very direct. There is no good reason to stay with the narc. Not one. I've heard them all. I've never heard a good one. So today I'll cover what I call the top 10. There are a number of, of uh, reasons to stay that are bogus, but I'll cover the top 10. So I'm going to give the, in a moment, I'm going to give the reason, and then I'm going to uh, explode that reason. I'll give my response, of course, to that reason. Dr. Clark always has a response. Yes. Now, for more detailed information on codependency and narcissism and how to heal from codependency and get strong enough to leave the narc, I've got two resources for you. I want to I want to highlight. We have many on the website, which is Dr. No, David E. Clark, PhD.com. That's Clark of the Knee. 20 Lies, my book on codependency. This is the book you need to start the process. If you're just starting the process, this will get you going and get you moving out of codependency. And then I want to mention my brand new online video series. I've just finished writing that, in fact, just yesterday. It's called From Codependent to Independent. In fact, I told the blonde today, Sandy, my wonderful wife of 41 years, that today, because I finished it, whenever I finish a major project, the day after that project, I call the day of Dave. And that means it's all about me. It's, it's hardly ever about me, as you can imagine. But uh, I said, Sandy, today is going to be the day of Dave, I want to, which means I go to Starbucks, I get my sausage, cheddar, and egg sandwich, I get my venti, because grande is not big enough. Once you've had the venti, you can't go back. The venti hot chai tea latte. This is... And that's how I start the day. And then I have a special place to go to lunch. And Sandy said to me, which may not shock you, she said, Dave, every day is the day of Dave. <laughs> anyway, that's probably true. But nonetheless, so I think you're really going to like this brand new video series, 21 videos from codependent to independent that show you how to fight back against the narc's abuse. And I cover 18 specific areas of abuse and what you can do in response. And as you respond to these things in the way I want you to, and I believe the way God wants you to, you're going to get stronger and you're going to get stronger and you're going to get more assertive and you're going to protect your relationship with your kids and you're going to be able to get out. It takes time, but you can get strong enough to leave. And in just about every video, I, ha I have the children in view. Because I, I hear from ladies every single day, heard from a couple ladies today, every single day, my kids have turned against me. I'm in the divorce process. He's won them over. I'm out. We don't want that to happen. And so in every video, as you're preparing to leave and you're still living with a dirt ball, narc, you will, you are going to have your, we have the kids in view, protecting your relationship with them and letting them see 
what dad is really like. So we're looking at a release uh, mid to late January. Take a look at that. And if you want to know, we'll, we'll talk more about this in the next live stream in January. Uh, but if you want to be on my email blast list, and I hope you do, um, you'll, you'll, hear, you'll hear about everything we're doing. And we're doing more and more things here. God is ramping us up. He's blessing this ministry like you wouldn't believe. Thanks to many of you, dear folks. And so go to the website, davidclarkphd.com, Clark with a knee, and sign up. On the homepage, you can sign up and give us your email address. You'll get a free ebook for that, for doing that. But it talks about what a narcissist is. But at the same time, once we have your email address, then we will, now we're not going to bombard you with ads and all, we don't do that. But we'll we'll let you know what we're doing, like when this video series is going to release and other things. So you, you'll know all that we're doing. And that's, I think that's the benefit. Of course, it's free. We don't charge you for that. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check in now and see what's going on interact with a few of your dear folks, and then I'm going to uh, start going over the top 10. Huh, I like that. The world is literally littered with these dream eaters, but we can work around it. Yeah, a dream eater is, is good. Boy, aren't they? You're going to get your dreams back. Your hope goes, your dream goes, your future goes. We're getting all of that back when you leave the dirt ball. Oh, look at this. Here's a good one. You helped me leave an abusive relationship of 14 years. I'm in the process, in the midst of divorce now. Good for you, Hannah. Absolutely great. Awful process, but necessary. Yeah. I hope this one lady helped my help her son to get away from his narc common law. Yeah, good, 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 good. This, this was a child. I deal with parents now who have children married to narcs. And man alive, there's strategies there that you can follow to get out. He started lying to our kids years ago. By the time I saw it, he had them firmly on a pedestal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They literally start. Narcs will start from the time your child is born. Every single one of them. Grooming. It's, it's really a form of grooming. It's not for sexual purposes, but it's for emotional connection and control. So he's ready. When you end up leaving him, he has got everything set up, and he's going to turn your own kids against you. He does it every single day. So we're fighting that in this online video series, big time. So that doesn't happen. Oh, he'll still keep trying. Narcs never stop. They're relentless. It will not be effective. And I'll tell you this too. And those of you that have lost your children, they've cut you off. They hate you. They're siding with the narc. When it's obvious to anybody with a brain, you're the good one and he's the bad one. Okay. He's won them over. There's hope for you too. I wrote a book called Adult Children Who Break Your Heart. That's a, a template you can follow if the children are older to bring them back into the fold. And I do phone sessions on this topic as well. If there's anything more evil that a narc does than turn your own children against you, I don't know what it is. And that's exactly what they're like. You are the only therapist and or Christian who deal with this issue in Christian community. Yeah, I think I may be the only one or not many like me. People that are Christians and that are therapists or counselors or pastors, they're just, I don't, how do I say it? They're weak. They're just weak. They're good people. I mean, they're God. They're more godly than I am. I guarantee you that. But you know what? They're weak, and they will not say anything forcefully. They want to help you make the decision. I had a lady today, a dear lady, I was talking to today on the phone, and she said, "I like you because I know when I call you and talk to you, you're going to tell me what to do." She has a therapist now who who won't tell her to get divorced, who won't tell her a specific plan of action to get away from her lousy narc. I said, "That's crazy." I will tell you clearly once I hear the story. If there's biblical reason, and not just get out, how to get out, because there are a number of steps you have to take. So I hope you find that's refreshing. 13 years torture. Yeah, boy, that's long enough. One year with the narc is enough. Most ladies don't spend just one year. It's, it's five, it's 10, it's 15, 20, 30, 40 years of your life. You know what? That's long enough. That's for sure. Oh, good. A pastor and a deacon move me out. I'm blessed. You are, Cynthia. You know what? There are great pastors and elders and church leaders who get it, who absolutely get it, and, and will actually support you and side with you. You don't take anyone on your support team, anyone who isn't 100% on your side. If you hear some Wemus that says, oh, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm your narc's friend, he won't say narc, but your, your husband's friend too, and, and try to straddle the fence, no. I had an old professor that had, made, had this wonderful saying. I said, you know what? If you straddle the fence, you get a sore crotch. It's exactly right. You're going to come down on one side or the other. There is a right and there is a wrong. This is black and white. It isn't it, it, shades of gray. If they're not sure, you cut them off. You have nothing to do with them. Th this pastor and elder were on board and actually moved her out. Very good. 
you know, we're not that concerned about the the church leaders confronting the narc. I mean, yeah, if they can if they want. It's a waste of time. And, and they might they might do church discipline. That'd be fine. We're just looking for practical help to get you out. That's what we're doing. Let's look over here at the at the TikTok. We love TikToks too. At 22 years, I really need specific steps, words, documents. So glad you were helping. Oh, yeah, very specific. Well, uh, I think two books ago, I, I wrote uh, Escaping Your Narcissist. That's the whole divorce process. You know how many Christian therapists have the guts to, to actually say, you're, you're going to get a divorce and here's exactly what will help you? You're not many. For me, it's like obvious. And that book is helping people. Highly manipulative narcissist husband finally separated. Good. Get out. Good for you. Yeah. Oh, for heaven's sake. This one told this dirtball told told the woman if 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 you leave, you're gonna lose the baby that's inside of you. That that you know that she's pregnant with him. That's just awful. That's evil. Evil. Pit of hell. Yeah. Looking at Instagram here, we've got a number of Instagram people too. We love them too. Yes, we do. At least those that love us. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah, stay strong is right. Yeah. Oh, for heaven's sake. This one lady says, when, when, when her 14-year-old argues with the narc, the, the narc threatens to kill himself. Oh, for heaven's sake. These people are nutballs. Absolute nutballs. You're going to have to really speak truth to your children and get them prepared even for any kind of reaction from the narc. This is an education process. And this new online series from Codependent to Independent that's coming out in January is going to help you with that. How to specifically work with your kids to prepare them for what the narc's going to dish out, and it will help them understand. Even at 14, this kid can get it. The suicide card. Yeah, classic. I shouldn't say this, but if only. <laughs> I mean, we're not looking for someone to kill themselves. Very few narcs will do that. Some will. I've had a few cases recently where the narc actually did kill himself. And I said to the ladies involved, because they felt really guilty, I said, this is not your fault. You're going to have to work it through. It, it's traumatic. It was one final effort by the narc. To make you suffer forever, God doesn't want that. No, he does not. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. And thanks so much for your interaction. I'm going to get back to your to your comments in a, in a few minutes. I'm going to go over the top 10 here and just move through. I'm going to do five, and then I'm going to take a break and interact some more, and then we'll do five more. We're doing fine on time. Okay, let's start. The top 10 reasons you stay with the narc. One, and this is the lady talking or the man. I want to do all I can to save my marriage. I've heard that once. I've heard it a million times, and I understand it. Nobody wants to get divorced. My response to this, I want to do all I can to save my marriage, is this. You don't have a marriage. The narc has destroyed it. There's no marriage left. This is like saying, I want to save my car when your car is a burned out lump of twisted metal. There's nothing left. It's gone. Push it over a cliff. You have already done all you can do without results. Lady after lady after lady after man after man who's lived with the narc 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. They've done every possible thing. I spoke to a lady recently. She has over 100 books on marriage. Okay, God knows you've done your best. Nothing. I'm, listen to me. Nothing works with a narc. Nothing except getting out. And it's about you now, not about him. So one more year, five more years, 10 more years, 40 more years won't make any difference except you'll be sicker and weaker. And he's turning your own children against you. Now it's time to save yourself and your kids. Okay, number two. Second reason to stay is I know God can do a miracle. People in the church, and you can understand they're holding out for a miracle. And we know that God does miracles all the time. He's still in the miracle business. There's no question about that. We've seen miracles in our lives. This is one case you're not going to see one, almost certainly. God will not force the narc to change. He doesn't force any of us to follow him and obey him. And frankly, the narc sees no reason to change. There's nothing to work with. Hoping the narc changes is like staying in a burning home with your children. It's burning all around you. Praying, you're praying along with your kids that God stops the fire. Could he stop the fire? Well, of course he can stop the fire. Is he going to? I don't know. What God wants you to do is get out, get your kids and get out of the home. I'll tell you what the miracle will be. And this will be a miracle because those of you that have left know how incredibly hard it is. That's why we have all these programs to help you get out. It's not just get out. How to. We have how to steps. The miracle will be God showing you the truth, getting you out of denial, out of codependency, and getting you strong enough to leave the marriage. That's the miracle. And God's going to come through on that 100% of the time. 
Okay, number three. My spouse loves me. I have heard that probably a half dozen times just this week. My spouse on phone advice sessions, but but he loves me. My response is always the same. No hesitation. No, he doesn't. He only loves himself. This is a lie that helps you cope and helps you stay. Well, I really believe he he he's you know he 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 loves me. Just because of the few nice things he does, we're only about only about checking the box and for him anyway. No, it does not mean he loves you. He's incapable of loving anyone else but himself. You ask yourself, well, why did he marry me if he doesn't love me? I've heard that on the phone too. The answer is pretty easy. It was time to get married. He wanted a family. He knew he could control you. He knew what he had on his hands, an empath, a sweetheart, a nice person, someone that he could manipulate. And frankly, you make him look good. Your marriage is all about his ego, his image, not about you. It will never, ever be about you. It can't be. A narc will not share the spotlight with anyone. I was joking about the day of Dave. Today is the day of Dave. And you're part of the day of Dave. I'm having, because I love doing this. This is fun. But that's like every day. Every day for the narc is the day of Bob or Pete or Dave or whatever. In an incredibly selfish way. There, There are no breaks from this. Okay, number four is a whopper. And many of you have felt this way and thought this. It's, I've heard this many, many times. It's, but Dave, Dr. Clark, it's better. If I stay, it's better for my children. No, it's not. Now, every mom listening here, and frankly, every dad that's married to a narc, you would do, and if it, if it was actually better, actually helpful to your kids to stay for 25 or 30 years with a narc, that's exactly what you'd do. Because you would sacrifice, like Sandy and I, anything for our children, anything. But I'm telling you here, it's never, listen to me, never a good idea to stay for the sake of the kids. Quite the opposite is true. The narc is destroying your children day by day by day. Your little girls are going to marry someone just like him. That's the last thing you want. Your little boys, guess who they're going to be like? Not like you, like dad, because they identify with dad. The narc is turning your kids against you right now. It's not just that they're being damaged. Oh, they are. And horrible example being said of a marriage on top of it, but he's turning them against you. The longer you wait to leave, the more damage is done and the harder it will be to turn back your kids' hearts and minds to the Lord and to you. So by staying, you lose your children. I've seen that over oh, thousands of times. Emails, texts, phone advice sessions, Instagram, TikTok. I've heard it. Okay? So don't stay for the sake of your kids. You're leaving for the sake of your kids. Okay, number five, and then I'm going to do some interacting with you guys, which I love to do. Number five is, and, I, and I've told this all the time, but, but, but Dave, God hates divorce. And my response is, yes, he does. In an overall sense, certainly. Uh, you know, Malachi too, yes. God doesn't want divorces to happen. It's not his desired will, but God knows how you are suffering. He knows more than anyone else the pain and the anguish you are going through. He has provided three reasons to divorce in the Bible, and you have at least one of those ironclad. Take it to the bank, to the theological seminary, whatever, and that is chronic emotional abuse. God, And so God will not hate your divorce. He'll, in fact, approve it. He not only is okay with you leaving, he wants you to leave. Because he wants you happy and he wants it peace. Would a loving Heavenly Father ever want you to suffer like this? I've talked to dads on the phone and their daughters are, are, are living with narcs and being shredded every day. And they would do anything to get their precious daughter away from that horrible monster. This is your Heavenly Father. He wants you out. He'll let you stay. That's a choice you can make. I have ladies and men make that choice, that choice all the time. Okay, that, okay. That's your choice. But it doesn't mean he's going to hate your divorce. Oh, no, he'll approve it. Now, before I interact, uh, I want to mention something that we're really excited about. This is like a tease. In the business, they call this a tease. It's like a promo. But also starting in January, get this, For we're going to have a Facebook subscription service. Facebook, right, Phil? Facebook subscription service. We've never done this before for a very reasonable price. I'll just tell you what it is. $4.99. 
Not $499, though it would be worth that. I'm kidding. $499, not even $5 for a Facebook subscription service where you will get exclusive content from Dr. Clark. Exclusive content nobody else sees. And even the regular videos I do, you'll get those before anybody else. And there'll be other benefits. We're working on the package now, but that's something you can look forward to. And we'll roll that out in January. Um, and we'll and we'll be there'll be some email blasts. So sign up on the home on the home page of my website to understand what that's going to be about. We'll explain it. And of course, we'll have all, all kinds of promos going on for that. And we'll talk about that in the le- next live stream as well. But we're kind of excited. We're reaching a new level. God is blessing us with followers and subscribers. We want to we want to meet those needs. Okay, let me, let me talk to you folks, and then I'll, I can finish off the rest of these uh, when I get a chance. Yeah. Four boys, stay-at-home mom, diagnosed NPD. Yeah, you can't survive it, and your kids will resent you staying. Absolutely. Another way you lose the kids. He, of course, he turns them against you. But and I and this is this is a heartbreaking situation when moms say to me on the phone, especially and some dads too, in the aftermath of divorce, why why did you stay? Why for so long? Why why didn't you protect me? Oh my goodness, you don't want to hear that from your children. You can still save it. There's still room for healing, and I think complete recovery. But man alive, yeah, they'll resent you for staying. Kids don't miss anything. They can be fooled by the NAR, but they also know that bad things are going on. And if you're not going to protect them, okay. They can't trust you. You don't want that to happen. You can be honest and say, kids, I, I'm not ready to leave yet. I've got, I'm not strong enough. I've got some things to put into place. Okay, but I'm on the way out and that will give them the hope they need. Yeah, this is a good one. If we could have a group created for people who suffer from narcs. Yes, I know. There's some great people that are doing this. Leslie Vernick, you may have heard of Leslie Vernick. She's well-known. She's a pioneer in this field. She does some online groups. Uh, Shelly Martinkus, who I have a tr- great deal of respect for. Uh, she also has a group, Redemptive Living for Women. You might check that out. Uh, both solid gold, absolutely great. Um, we, we, we've we thought about doing that kind of thing. We're not quite ready to do that, but it's a, it's a very good idea. It really is. Yeah. How do I find my way back to my kids? I'll tell you what, if they're adult children, uh, I want you to get the book, Adult Children Who Break Your Heart. If they're 18 and up, that, that's the book for you. It'll give you a template of steps to take to give you the best chance to win your children back, who the narc has won over, or if they've left for some other reason and have cut you off. If you have younger children, I would recommend I didn't want a divorce. Now what? I cover that in some detail, uh, how to deal uh, with the narc in that way, and also to a degree in the divorce process, escaping your narcissist. So those are some books that will help you with some practical areas in getting your kids to turn their hearts and minds back to you. There's some mistakes you don't want to make, and there's some things you need to do. I was told I was worthless and had no value by my narc husband. Yeah, that's what they do. He told me to get a job at a store. I'm having problems with both knees. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, Mary, you know what? You're going to get out. It's going to take some time, my dear. That's why we have these materials for you. Going to have to get strong. Got to get your physical, physical health up. You may need a job just to get away from him, but you know you want to get away from this monster. See, if you hear day in and day out, not just the words "you're worthless," but by actions and rejection. Talked to a lady the other day who, who the narc. Most of these narcs will just pre- pressure you for sex and kinky sex and horrible things. This was just the opposite. He re- now eventually they'll reject you. He has rejected her ten years won't touch her. That's actually a break because who wants a sleazy narc to touch you? But it's still heartbreaking and awful. That's what they're like. Get away from those people. And again, but again, that 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 message is you're worthless. You're worthless. And if you stay long enough, you know what? And Mary may be in this situation, you start to believe it. Maybe maybe I am worthless. You're not. You are priceless to God. He keeps me hanging on, Heather says. He says he will confess. Oh, for heaven's sake, he says, he says, he says. You know what? He lies. You know when the, you know when a narc is lying? When they open their stupid mouth. So many lies. You can't tell the lies from the truth. There's very little truth. Heather, don't believe him. Listen to me. And you guys help Heather out. Don't believe a word that dirtball says. There are all kinds of promises. That's how they suck you back in. 
They will tell you all the things you want to hear when they're caught in sin or they know that you're ready to go, leave them, and they don't want that to happen. It isn't because they love you, and it ain't because they're going to change. They're saving money. They don't want to look bad in the community. That's all. That's all it is. And they want to continue to control you. You might get a couple of weeks. You might get a couple of months of nicey-nicey, and I'm going to do this, and I'll do this. All kinds of wonderful promises. What you want from him. I'll pray with you. I'll go to church. I will communicate. I will know he won't. No, he won't because he's a lying person. I almost said a swear word, but I have some self-control and I didn't do that. Don't believe him. Heather, don't believe him. Oh, for heaven's sake, I've heard stories like this too. Ex-husband used our teenagers to lie to the police and had me falsely arrested. I've heard those stories and they're not uncommon. Oh, literally. The kids will lie for him. That's that's how strong the control is. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, you're actually gonna, gonna have to get yourself healed first. That's part of my process. Even in the adult children book, adult children who break your heart, you gotta heal first. You don't fool with your kids who have cut you off until you're healed. All right. When you're healed and you're assertive and you can speak truth, that's when you begin to reach out to them. And you will not be disrespected by them or you will move away from them. You won't beg or chase or plead. There'll be certain conditions. There's a whole series of steps you have to take. Yeah, lost my kids in court due to lies. Exactly. This is why I wrote the book, Escaping Your Narcissist. And this is one of the reasons I did this online, new online series from codependent to independent. So that doesn't happen. So you have your children with you and, and, and you're close to them even as you leave the narc. Because if you don't take those steps, yeah, you lose your kids, at least temporarily. Don't give up hope. Here's, are you live and reading our comments? Yes, this is live. This is as live as it gets. L-I-V-E. Yes, yes, I am. Now, if you're going to watch, people will watch the uh, the replay, but this isn't the replay. This is happening right now. Yeah. Yeah, he, he wants, she's uh, she's told the guy uh, she's done and he's gaslighting her now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, he's saying we didn't agree to break up. <laughs> oh, he's forgotten that you told him that you were done and we're divorcing him. Wow, memory loss, incredible. He accuses you of losing your memory. Look, don't even bother telling him uh, that you're leaving and that you're done. I, I wouldn't bother because that then he makes your life a living hell and he's kind of on to you. I recommend just the opposite. Not that that's the end of the world. I mean, really, who cares? But the fact is it makes your life more difficult. If he wonders if you're leaving, lie and say, no, I'm not going anywhere. That's a Rahab lie. Check out the Bible. No, you're you're going to be lying because you want to get your ducks in a row. He has no right to know you're done with him. It's a secret plan. Daughter called suicide hotline. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, oh, this lady was going to take her life. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, this was a fake. She would never take her life. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they're trying to have me committed. I've heard these stories, too. It is that evil. Put you in a mental ward when they're it, they're lying. Oh, for heaven's sake. Yeah, boy. Oh, this lady stopped sleeping with a narc. Yeah, good for you. Don't blame you. Save you disease. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that, of course, that, that really bothers the narc. Of course, it's never, it's never making love with the narc. It is just having sex. You are simply a receptacle. This is a family show. We're going to be careful here. But yeah, that, you're just a receptacle. That's all you are. It is for his pleasure, his benefit. His release, it has nothing to do with you. So when you end when you end up stopping that and you need to, oh yeah, all heck's gonna break loose. Too stinking bad. And he'll blame you when he goes outside the marriage uh, to get sex. He's already doing that anyway, probably, so who cares? Just one more reason to divorce him, frankly. Yeah, seven years. He will still call like when when will we get back together? Oh my goodness. Yeah, I've known Martin Narks like this or heard of them. Oh yeah. Divorced for seven years, and he still thinks he's got a chance, the control, and he would love to get you back so we could destroy your life all over again. I've talked to ladies, and some of you are like this, and, and I've talked to some men too, and some of you will, will relate to this, where you, you it's a, a horrible mistake, but you think your pastor wants you to, your kids want you to, you think it's the right thing, he's changed, you've already divorced him, and you go back to him. Oh, for heaven's sake. And it's worse. It's the seventh level of hell because now he can really destroy you. Don't do that. Don't waver. When you make the decision, don't waver. Oh, yes. This is classic, Anna says, and she's right. 
He claims I'm cheating because I've stopped the sex. Well, of course, it must mean that you're cheating. It can't mean that you'd hate his guts and you don't want his slimy hands on your body and he's treated you so badly, who'd want to have sex with him? Well, it can't be that. Yeah, ignore him. Ignore him. You're not cheating. Ignore him. Advice for co-parenting. Yeah, you know what? It's the wrong word for the narc anyway. It's never, It's the problem is it's never co-parenting. It's going to be, it's going to be separate, two separate systems. Don't even, I'm telling you, don't even attempt to co-parent with a narc, whether you are living with him or whether you are divorced from him. It, it ain't going to work. He's going to do whatever he's going to do with the kids and that will never stop. You're going to live the way you're going to live with your godly rules and your principles in your home. All right. It's going to be God's way. And you're going to have boundaries and rewards and consequences. And you're going to, you might even get my book for basic parenting, which is what you're going to be doing. I think my parenting book, which nobody ever buys, would be a good book for you. Well, some people buy it. Parenting is Hard and Then You Die would be an excellent book for you. And so you will control that. You'll also teach your children how to manage the narc when they go to his home, when he has them, manage, deal, humor him, never confront him. So there's a whole bunch of things, but it's not co-parenting. Don't even bother. Don't even bother. Okay, there's Instagram people joining here. Very good. Glad glad to have you with us. Yeah, that's why you need to move. Yeah, if you can move, great. That would be wonderful. Yeah. I'll never quit. Mine told a friend I'll never quit trying. Oh, for heaven's sake. See, it sounds good. And it sounds like he really loves you. And, and what he's really saying is you had no right to divorce me. The narc. This is the narc. And, and I will never stop trying to get her back. Yeah, OJ is oh, still trying to find the killer. You know what? Stop it ridiculous. No, 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 no. It's just words. It means nothing. Never believe that. He can try all he wants. He's not even trying. But the narc can never quite understand because he's perfect. He's so wonderful. Who in the world would want to leave him? It's the privilege of your life, of anyone's life to have time with him, let alone be married to him. He has no idea the hell on earth he's putting you through, frankly, nor does he care. He knows you're suffering, but that's your dumb fault. He doesn't understand it. He never will. I would think of his great qualities for years to handle the present. Oh, I know, Carrie. You're done with that now, and praise God you are. See, that's all part of coping. And you'll hear that from some pastors and counselors. Well, just think of his good traits. Yeah, that's pretty hard to do. That's talking about creative thinking. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, he's a hard worker. What are you going to come up with? He keeps his mustache groomed. Are you kidding me? He feeds the dog. There isn't much on that list. I'll tell you to focus on the negative things because that's who he really is. Yeah. They don't change, Amelia. You have got that absolutely right. Ever. Full-blown narc. Never. He hated my family and friends and people. Of course, isolation. We cover that in the new video series too. From codependent to independent, you are going to be, he isolates you. He'll suck up to your family during the dating phase, but once you're married to him, he doesn't want you with your, fam your, your people, your family, your friends. He might cut you off from your job at church people. He wants you isolated. He wants to have total control. And that way, no one, no one can help you. And it means you have to rely solely on him, which is exactly what he wants. Uh, -uh. Part of the process, even when you're living with him, is changing that. This is not Saudi Arabia. It's not Yemen. It's not the Middle East. You have rights in America. So you're going to start, in fact, connecting with old friends uh, and family, telling them the truth about the narc. You don't ask them to confront him, but you're going to be living your life and having friends because you're going to need that support system when you leave him. And of course, it actually helps you uh, before you leave, be sustained and supported. Yeah. After four years, I'm out. Good for you. 62 RN. Good for you. I thought I was crazy, but I'll bet you did, Brenda. They will convince you you're crazy. Uh-uh, he's the crazy one. Yeah. She had strong self-esteem when they got married. Good. Well, good. And four years. Okay, four years was awful of hell. At least it wasn't 40. That's something. But I'll tell you this right now. I, I talk to ladies every day who 35 and 40 years, 30 years with the narc. You know what? God love them. They're still standing. God has a great plan for you. Your life isn't over. Don't think, well, like, why would I why would I leave now? You got years left to live. You're 60, whatever. You could live 30 years. And those can be years of peace and happiness and love and service to the Lord. You're still okay. Long as you leave. Yeah, they withhold sex on purpose. Oh, absolutely. Everything is a weapon. They weaponize everything. If they have any kind of an illness, 
Talked to a lady whose husband has MS, a narc, a miserable, horrible narc, developed MS. Now he's weaponizing the MS to keep her with him. And I'll tell you this, there's nothing nothing quite as worse, as, a, as nasty as a narc who has a debilitating disease. Oh, mean as a snake. He'll make your life horrible until he dies. You know what? No, you can still leave him, and you should. Yeah, boy. 35 years alive and thankful, good for you. Yes, 47 years married. He's dragging the divorce out. Exactly, Jackie. By the way, I love the name Jackie. We have a granddaughter named Jackie. Oh, love that name. Our fourth child was going to be Jackie. Turned out to be a William. We didn't know. Anyway, but uh, yeah, yeah, he will. Um, 47 years for heaven's sake. They'll do all kinds of things. Jackie, get the book, Escaping Your Narcissist. This is how to divorce a narc. This is the ins and outs. They will drag it on forever. You need an attorney who will get the job done and get you out. Yeah, everything is weaponized. That's right, Meg. She's agreeing. Yes, yes. Yeah, huh. he was never said to leave us for military service. You know he wasn't Carrie. Oh no, the things he the Nort can do when he's out of town, you don't want to know. You can figure it out. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, they love to the travel. Love to travel. Good divorce is final on the fifteenth from my Nort. All right, you're almost there, sweetheart. Yes, you're gonna make it. Good for you. That's worth celebrating. Yeah, the judicial system is a joke. Boy, you're not kidding. It's a joke. Oh, for heaven's sake, it's a TikToker. Awful. That's why I wrote the book, Escaping Your Narcissist, to navigate your way through. Not easy. Oh, this narc didn't touch her for a year and a half. Y you begin to wonder, uh, why am I married? Yeah, that's a good question to ask. You have no reason to be married to someone like that. Oh, for heaven's sake. Can't have sex with anybody else. Yeah. Bullies me, never says sorry, blames me for everything. Oh, yeah, everything is your fault. What's happening in the Middle East right now? Your fault. Cheating on me, left me for left me for the skank. Yeah, she doesn't say skank. That's my word. Yeah. Oh yeah. These skanks are everywhere. Yeah, boy. Yeah. After 36 years, this narc's ready to give his hand to another woman. Oh, you know, let him. This is painful. It is rejection. You're going to heal from that. But let that skank, and she is a skank, because you're married. Take him off your hands. You've got some healing to do, some grieving, but you know what? Righteous anger is your friend now. Let her have him. It's going to be a miserable, awful relationship. Yeah, God's not going to bless them. God is not mocked. Justice will be done. Let me take my time. We're doing good on time. Interact some more, and then I'll go over these last five and interact some more. My 13-year-old doesn't want to go with him to be with his new family. She has to go on a family vacation. She doesn't want to go. At, I'm telling you what, check with your attorney. I am telling you, at 13, that's kind of a dividing line. She may not have to go. I don't think many courts are going to force her to go uh, on this family vacation. I really don't think so. And maybe she'll develop some kind of a strange virus that we can't identify right before the trip. Look, whatever. You don't want to make her go. You're very supportive, honey. I'll do whatever. You, as long as your daughter knows, I'm going to do everything I can to keep you from this trip. You'll be okay with her. And if she does have to go legally, okay, Make sure she can have contact with you and you can support her during the vacation. But at 13, not many courts are going to make her go. Of course, you, the narrative will be, oh, you're, you turn my daughter against me. You won't let her go. You don't say anything. I like to say she hates your guts like, like I do. I'm not making her go. No response. It's her choice. It's her decision. And I don't blame her. I'm with the kid. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't want to cross the street with a narc. Oh, here's a good one. He flirted with the cute ladies at church. Oh, you know he did. Anything to cop a buzz, anything to cop a feel, all right? He won't fool with the older women. It's, it's the younger ones or the ones he finds attractive, and he loves to talk with them and, and help them. Oh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, it's nasty. It's a form of grooming. He's getting, uh, he's getting his jollies out of it, and he'll often do it right in front of you. Many of you ladies have had this experience. You're standing there, or you're five feet away. You know exactly what he's doing. He's flirting. That is a form of adultery. When you're married, if you're single and the other person's single, you flirt all you want. Who cares? It's in the Constitution. But if you're married, it's adultery. That's what it is. Don't bother confronting him. Who cares? He'll deny it. Never happened. She's just a friend. You're paranoid. You're crazy. You're, you're out of your mind. Really? Don't bother. But you know exactly what he's doing. And if one of those ladies from church even, anybody can go to a church, doesn't have to be a nice woman, uh, wants to play with him, oh, he'll play with her. He, the narc is always looking for possibilities.
And if she needs a new floor put in, if she's got problems with her car, whatever it is, he'll be helping her all the way to the bedroom. Yeah. Yeah, this 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 is the same lady. She has to go with his new little young girlfriend. Yeah, skank, airhead, bimbo, and her bratty fat sons. <laughs> I like that. They're bratty and they're fat. I'll bet they are. You know what? Oh. Do what you can, dear June, to keep her out of that mess. She's going to get a number of colds, unexplained illnesses, whatever. Keep her out of that. He'll have the world's biggest fit. But you need to try to save her if you can. And again, he might take you to court, um, you know, and 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 cause a problem and try to get you know the, the divorce decree, you know, to be to be you know to be done. Okay, he's going to have to spend money on that if he wants to do it. This is something you wouldn't even have representation. You just go to court and plead your case, but your daughter knows. I did my best, honey. I'm trying to keep you away from him. And of course, if you've got kids that are that are still going over to his place, uh, if you can doc, the court likes evidence and documents. So if you can document, start a journal of, of what life is like for your daughter over there and have her talk to you. If there's any form of emotional abuse, or physical abuse, or rejection, or lack of her needs being met. Okay, that can be used. You're creating a case to keep her out of there. Can't hurt. Yes, no contact protected me emotionally. Exactly. No contact is the way to go with the narc. Zero. Only, if you've got kids, only some app that your attorney approves, the court approves, that you have to deal with them. Logistics, pickup times, nothing personal, nothing. The narc tries to drag you into these never-ending conversations. It's a waste of time. Okay, in view of our time, I'm going to go over the last five of these reasons, and then um, I'm going to interact some more if we have some time at the end, okay? And look forward to January. We've got the new Facebook subscription service. Look for that, $4.99. This is a steal for exclusive content from Dave Clark. Who doesn't want to have more content from Dave Clark? I'm just telling you. Let me see a show of hands. Anyway, that's going to be there. And you'll get the they get the videos I do all the time early before everybody else. And we're also going to be releasing this new online video series. Go to the website, davidclarkphd.com. Sign up. Give us your email. We're not going to bombard you. We just send out things when we need to to let you know what we're doing, rolling out uh, new products and uh, and opportunities, even some radio things that I do. Okay, number six. In terms of uh, one of the top ten reasons why you stay with an ARC. And this is a good one. Because people I talk to mostly are godly Christian people. Number six is, I have no biblical reason to divorce. To which I say, who told you that? It was a pastor who doesn't know his Bible. It was a biblical counselor or counselor who doesn't know his, his or her Bible. It was a family member, clueless. Look, my dad paid for this, so, so I can say this. He sent me to two seminaries, Dallas Theological Seminary, Western Conservative Baptist Seminary. Okay, I, I know the Bible. I would never recommend anything that I didn't believe was biblical. And I'm telling you, there are three biblical reasons for divorce. Adultery, Matthew 19, 9, which includes emotional affairs and physical adultery and prostitution and porn and flirting all on the table. Number two, abandonment by an unbelieving spouse. 1 Corinthians 7, 15. I'm telling you right now. Now, God knows ultimately, but many, many, many narts are going to be shocked at the rapture or, or, or whenever they stand before the Lord and they'll think that they know him and they don't know him. God knows. But living that way, I doubt it. So, and also number three, of course, chronic, emotional, and or physical abuse. Solid, gold, reason for divorce. Also, 1 Corinthians 7, 15. If you you want to know about those reasons, read Escaping Your Narcissist, they're all in there. You absolutely have number three if you're married to a narc, the chronic emotional and or physical abuse, but you may have adultery because many narcs are into adultery, and you may have abandonment by an unbelieving spouse. And listen to me, the abandonment is not just speaking of physical abandonment. Certainly it, it can be that. Oh no, it can be living in the same home with someone who is rejecting you. Who is who is turning like like denying you any kind of physical affection, or harming you, or just cutting you off and the silent treatment? That's abandonment, so that counts too. Okay, number seven, and th this one okay is valid temporarily. Dave, they they'll tell me I can't make it financially, especially a lady. I can't make it financially. That's why I'm staying. My response is okay, not now, not yet. Fair enough, fine, but you can get education. 
you can get training. It might take a year. It might take two years. I don't know. But the light at the end of the tunnel, and you'll tell your kids, mom is getting out. I have to get ready to go. You can get a job that will support you and your kids. Separate bank account. All your money goes into that account. And don't let the narc spend all the money you're making because that's what he'll try to do. Plus, in the divorce, don't forget, check with a solid attorney. You will get money. This is America, a financial settlement, half of the assets, child support. Yes, you will. Number eight, this is kind of a sad one. I hear this a lot in kind of a halting voice. Dave, well, well, he can be nice sometimes. Oh, for heaven's sake. Really? His occasional nice does not make up for all his abuse. Would you keep a dog, a bad dog who was nice some of the time, but was attacking you and biting you most of the time? No, you get rid of the dog. And if you think I'm comparing your narc to a bad dog, yes, I am. Would you keep a friend that treated you like garbage most of the time, but was nice some of the time? No. No, you wouldn't. Number nine. And this this is, when I hear that, I know the narc has done his magic and he's convinced the codependent sweetheart that she is partly at fault. In fact, maybe mostly at fault. And so she'll say, Dave, but really I'm part of the problem too. No, you're not. The problem is the narc. Your problem is thinking you're part of the problem. You say, but but Dave, I get, and then I'll go over a list of things they do wrong. I can always perfect. I get furious with him and say awful things to him. Well, of course you do. He's driving you nuts. But I don't meet his needs. Don't worry about that. You can never fill his needs. But I resent him. Of course you do. That's normal. They'll say, sometimes I hate him. And I'll say on the phone all the time, you know what? I haven't even met your husband. I will never meet him. And I hate him based on what you've told me. He should be hated. David hated his enemies, the evil people. They were trying to destroy him. God hates men that abuse their wives. Read Malachi 2. You can't read it any other way. In 1 Peter 3, 7, Peter makes it very clear. Some of the most chilling words in the Bible, not let alone the New Testament. A husband who mistreats his wife, that doesn't treat her like a queen with extreme gentleness and care. Guess what? God doesn't hear his prayers. Whoa, that's anger. What the, what, you, what, what you're talking about here is reactive abuse. You're like a beaten, cornered animal lashing out to survive. You know what? Okay, that's not on you. Not that you're proud of it. The narc is the problem. He is the abuser. He's destroyed the marriage, not you. You're not perfect, of course, but you haven't destroyed the marriage. He has. Okay, number 10, and we'll have some time at the end to do some more connecting with people. Yeah, this lady says, I just happened to see that, would hear, you're too sensitive. Oh, yes, so sensitive. You're not sensitive, you're normal. When somebody beats you over the head with a club, to react is normal. When somebody rejects you, criticizes you, gaslights you, blames you, yeah, I'm going to have a reaction. Excuse me. Now, part of my whole approach in the codependent, independent video series is, is shutting down emotionally, getting emotional detachment. This is critical. And I've got a whole strategy for you to do that. But these reactions are normal. Finally, number 10, I hear this a lot, Dr. Clark, Dave, but if I leave him, he'll make my life a living hell that you're worried about what's going to happen afterwards. And you're right to do that because he'll try to do that. But my point is he's making your life a living hell right stinking now. (laughs) Oh yeah, he'll continue to try. But when you leave him, keep in mind, especially hopefully with my materials and God's using them, you're going to be stronger. You're going to be more assertive. You're going to get your self-esteem back. You're going to get your identity back. You're going to get your mojo back. You're going to get your confidence back. You're going to be strong with the Lord. You're going to have your kids with you. So you're going to be okay. Yes, he'll continue to try to make your life a living hell, which is probably where he's going, but that's his problem. You're you're going to be okay. You're not going to be okay if you stay. That's the message. Because once you're gone, space, peace, energy, joy, you can build a brand new life with your kids. And that's exactly what God wants you to do. Okay, those are the top 10. Again, for more reasons, and I, I go over the top 20, of course, in my book, 20 Lies, uh, covers a number of these and even, even 10 or 12 more. So you can get that book to see these lies. And frankly, I hate to say this, but most of you know I feel this way, and it's the truth. I've been at this 40 years. So many churches and, and, and pastors and Christian count, Christian counselors, they know Jesus, but they believe these lies. They want you to stay. Anything to save the marriage. No 
when the home is burning, you get out of it. There's no saving it. It's gone. Uh-uh. Okay, some folks are joining on Instagram. Let's check out the TikTokers here. We love them. We have only cell phones to separate, still connecting us. Yeah, good. That's it. And, and the less contact, the better. The narc will try to drag you into these long back and forth conversations. Uh -huh. The drama, the conflict, even when you're separated. No, separation means we don't have contact unless we absolutely have to. Rachel says, you helped me so much. I'm glad I did. That's what we're doing. Yeah, the narc tries to, tries to keep a hold on you. This one TikToker says, a hold on you forever. That's why the narc wants to stay in touch with any ex they have, ex-girlfriend, ex-wife. They still want to have contact because it's all about control and, and wanting to have attention and, and, and to have their, their say on things. Well, who cares? Divorce means we're done. I don't have to listen to you anymore. Kathy's, Kathy's getting the smear campaign. It's killing me. I know. You'll lose the PR battle, Kathy. You absolutely will. They're too good at this. They will convince everyone, even your own children, that there's something wrong with you. And they're relentless and they believe their own lies. Oh, you have to weather that. New church, new, new friends, maybe even new family. I mean, if your family doesn't side with you, maybe they're a bunch of crazy narcs too, or, or they think that, you've, that he's convinced them, you're done with them. I don't care if it's your dad, your mom, your stupid brother. You are done. You're moving on. It's a brand new life you have to create. And it's, it's awful. This is not the usual divorce where it's, it can be, of course, there's no amicable divorce, but at least you get along and it's reasonable and nobody's smearing somebody else. And gosh, this is too bad. This happened. No, no, no. The narc has to win. He has to destroy you and make you suffer and look bad in the community. Oh, do they know they have strongholds? If you're talking about the spiritual area, oh, they don't know. They, the narc doesn't know he's a tool of Satan, but that's exactly what he is. He's doing the devil's work, it says in 1 John. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. They, 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 they'll be shocked to find that out in the afterlife, but that's exactly the case. Yeah. Carrie, this is actually good. I'm starting to not care how others feel. Perfect. That's exactly what you want with certain people. People that aren't supportive of you, who, who treat you badly, who disrespect you. I don't care about your own kids. You're not going to have empathy for them. Now, the good news is as you heal, empathy should always be selective. It shouldn't be for the whole world because you can't trust the whole world. It's a very small group of people. The blonde and I have found out that we can really trust. Family, a few friends, that's it. We happen to have a wonderful pastor. Julie Miller is her name. Awesome. And Matthew Hartsfield. Is, is also our pastor, we can trust them. We know we can because we know them. But it's a very small group, all right? So this is actually, this emotional detachment is good, not caring. Because if you respond to everybody who hurts you, you're going to be a basket case. And you will be in the middle ward. And we don't want that. A tool of Satan, that's terrifying. Oh, it is. Oh, oh, I'm not kidding. That's how serious it is. Absolutely. You know how I know that? Because, because of the evil things he does. Absolutely. And Satan is working through him. You're either serving God or you're serving Satan. The Bible's clear on this. There is no in-between. Uh-uh. You have to make a choice. He, he doesn't know it, but he's made his choice. And the stupid narc has no idea he's being manipulated by Satan. And we don't give him a pass for that because he has invited it himself. Oh, yeah, dated a narc for 11 years. Oh, Mary, 11 years. You know what? You're done with him now. It's okay. He never cared how I felt. Oh, boy, it's, it's amazing how fast 11 years can go by. But you know what? Praise God, it's over. Do not agonize over the 11 years. Don't agonize over the 30 or the 40. Okay, it's done. You're moving on. And you, you have a great life to live here. You'll rebuild it. And, and, and of course, we're, as Christians, we live for eternity. You're going to have an eternity to enjoy. He stopped praying and reading scriptures with me. You know he did. During dating, the narc is a wonderful dater, and he's a spiritual, godly man. He will present. Talk about a wolf in sheep's a, a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Oh yeah, let me pray with you. I attend church. I'll attend church with you. Let's do devotions. He'll send you scriptures. It is all a con job, because after you get married, after maybe a month, if you get that much, he'll drop off, and all of a sudden, he's got questions about God. I don't, you thought he was a died in the world Christian. 
that would give his life for Jesus. But now he tells you, I don't feel like going to church today. What? I think I'm going to drop out of Sunday school. I don't need to go to the men's group anymore. Uh Uh-oh. And I'm not sure there is a God. And, And why does God allow all this pain? Oh, for heaven's sake. He's not a believer at all. You have been defrauded. Okay, if that happens, they can fool you. It's okay. God doesn't say, no, you made your choice. God says you can get out, and you should get out. Yeah, Timothy, in the end times, people will be lovers of themselves. Oh, yeah. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7, 1 through 6. You want to read a chilling series of verses about what a narc really is? Oh, God knows exactly what a narc is. And through Timothy, he's laid it out in 2 Timothy 3. Absolutely. Here's good. Carol. There is light and peace after divorcing a narc. Absolutely there is. Six months post-divorce, loving my new life because God is blessing me. Stay strong. Yes. Great message, Mary. Yes. There is life after a narc. Absolutely there is. And a much better one. Yeah. Best dater, love of my life. You're sure you have a soulmate. Yeah. He got a year. After a year, he suddenly changed. And it's been horrible for eight years. Okay, Jay. Get out. This is your time to get out. Start the process. And it's a process. You don't just leave tomorrow. Oh, yeah, here's a good one, too. They'll also do this. They actually weaponize the scriptures after we married so he could control me. Oh, yeah, they'll pick out, anybody can do this, pick out certain verses and just hammer you with those verses. They're out of context. He is all of a sudden Mr. Bible Scholar. He is a nitwit. He has no idea what the Bible says. He makes it say what he wants it to say. When I write my books, and my dad, William Clark, who's now in heaven, along with my mom, talk about soulmates. Anyway, he he would keep me safe when I'm writing my books in, in terms of how I use scripture. He said, Dave, and, and I, I can be guilty of this. He said, Dave, I, I don't, let's study this. Let's work. Come over to the house. I don't think it says what you're trying to make it say. And I said, dad, okay, I, I want to be careful. You know, I've got my team, Phil Dugas, Nancy Dugas, even David and Chloe, three and one years old. They're helping me, not with the Bible, but, and of course, Sandy, the blonde, uh, Bob Johns, w- w- they will keep me straight in my writing, in my presentation, is I want to make sure it's biblical. Yeah, You will know them by their fruits, Yvonne says, exactly. No fruit, uh, very likely no salvation. Again, God knows, but it doesn't look good. They'll always say they're a Christian. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus is going to say to many of them, I never knew you. Chilling. That's going to be their problem. We don't want that for them, but that's what they're choosing. This lady's been gone for, Angela, gone for five weeks, never felt so much peace. Yes, I can't remember the last time I felt this way. Oh, I'll bet you can't. You wake up in the morning and there's nobody next to you. All right? Oh, the narc and and all the stuff that comes with him. What's he going to be like today? Done. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it best to try not to put him down? Oh, yeah, don't bother. Don't engage. That's part of the emotional detachment I'm talking about in this new online video series out in January. Oh yeah, you're going to disengage on many levels. You're only going to speak up to practice your assertiveness and in front of the children. Not even other people, because really, who cares? It is your it is your little people, your children. You are going to speak up in front of them. If he chooses the venue to say something nasty to you and your children are sitting right there, boom, you're going to respond right then. And if he can't respond right then, you'll get back to him later in front of the kids. Boom. They have to see you responding and disagreeing with him. Otherwise, they'll believe him. They won't think, oh, mom's being nice and just taking it. No, they'll believe what he says because it's happened so many times. You will speak up at the time. And then later, you'll debrief with the children. Here's what dad said. Here's what dad did. Sinful, not true, abusive. Just want you to know here's God's way. And that's how you keep them with you. One of the one of the techniques. Oh my goodness. Here, here's an evil. Talk about evil. This son, her son has Down syndrome. And these are, you know, the Down syndrome folks are beautiful people. He wants to be a preacher. When my husband gets angry, he'll take it out of my son and will even mock him. Oh my goodness. Evil, evil, evil. You know what? He's going to pay for that. But you want to get that precious boy away from him. And, and if you can't get him totally away from him, you're going to be talking with your boy. And, and the Down syndrome boy and helping him understand dad is wrong. That is sinful. Awful. I mean, this is, I hear these stories all day long, but they're awful. No excuse. 
Rebecca makes a good point, and I got the answer. But speaking up puts women and children in danger. You're already in danger. Now be now be 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 clear here. You're only speaking up very briefly, and you'll oh there'll be backlash absolutely. And I'm going to help you in this online series deal with the backlash. But if you don't speak up, you lose your kids, and you are weakened and weakened. So you're going to speak up very strategically. And very briefly, you're going to make one brief statement. The kids will hear it and you're done. You're not going to engage. He will unleash on you. Okay. You, but you've said, you said your piece. It, it, it is far worse to say nothing and just take it. No, no, no. I'm not in favor of that. Not when your kids are involved. Now, when you're alone with the guy, who cares? Ignore him. You're not going to engage at all. Pointless. Distancing, uh, getting away from him, uh, you, you know, going in another room. Fine. Put the get earbuds and put them in. But when your kids are at stake, oh no, 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 not every time, but enough of the time, you're going to say something, even if only brief. Okay, eight thirty. You know what? The blonde needs me back home. This is the day of Dave, and uh, and I and she wants to see me because she's part of the day of Dave too. So I got to go home and see the blonde. Well, thank you so much. We've had a great 2023. You've been wonderful. Uh, we appreciate the support. We feel like our ministry is making a real difference. And 2024, great things are going to happen. We know God's going to be with us. So I will 